guys, it's your girl T. So I want to come on here and talk about this case. And so once again, it's coming from outrageous ass Ohio. What's going on is that we have another teenager. Yes, another one in my DJ Khaled voice. His name is Isaiah Akins, and basically he decided to pretend to be a state senator. The state senator's name was David Burke. He went through an elaborate scheme to pretend that he was supposed to be at this school called Mohawk High School to speak on his behalf because the senator was supposedly sick. This whole situation is really damn ridiculous. I want you guys to go ahead and check out this news clip, and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. Strange story out of the very nice town of Sycamore, Ohio. A case of false identity at a local high school there are Dane Sonsenbach has more. In this rural Wyandotte County School District, it's not that strange for a state senator to stop by and give a speech to civics classes. What is strange, though, is when that person that shows up is not who they say they are. Senator David Burke had agreed to speak to a class in January, but in late December, 18-year-old Isaiah M. Akins walked into Mohawk High School. This person showed up in advance early, days early, and said the senator had fallen ill and that he was there to take his place and speak. He looked the part. He was well-dressed, well-spoken, and told a believable story. He even showed up in a dealer vehicle with a personal driver. He went to Reinecke Ford, which um, is owned by Bill Reinecke, state representative, and represented himself in the same way and asked for a car and was able to obtain that. Akins presented his ID along with his phony story and was given a tour of the school and spoke to a class for about 45 minutes about advocacy. And then he left, gone, without any suspicion. It wasn't until a few weeks later when Senator Burke himself showed up for his scheduled speech that officials realized what had happened. Which brings the question of why. Why go through all that with apparently nothing to gain and no harm done? You can't help but see shades of Leo DiCaprio in Catch Me If You Can. Or The Dark Knight in How Some People Just Want to Watch the World Burn. No clear motive, but some citizens have legitimate concerns. It's all the things that we see in the news today that uh, go on in schools. Uh, schools need to be on their toes about everybody who comes into the school. What if he had a gun? What if he had drugs on him? I mean, it's really important that we do these background checks. We're going to tighten that up. We're going to be more diligent in verifying who people are, who they're there to see, are they there on time, and also calling back to their office or the entity that they're there representing and verify that they are indeed with that agency. A very strange story, but a great wake-up call. All right, so you guys just watched the news clip. Between this and the young man, Dr. Love in Florida, pretending to be a doctor, this whole situation is a hot damn mess. And after continued research, I also found out that, that the Dr. Love kid who opened up the medical practice was the same one who was caught pretending to be a doctor for an entire month. So they are one and the same kid. And now new details about a West Palm Beach teenager arrested for posing as a doctor. Malachi Love Robinson now facing grand theft charges in a new and unrelated case. Police say the 18-year-old not only presented himself as a doctor, but even went as far as opening his own medical office. NBC6 investigative reporter Willard Shepard here now with more on that. Willard. Well, Adam, this evening we've uncovered much more about what this young man was allegedly up to. Turns out he was just 17 when he formed the medical company he was using, and police say he was even making house calls. A Palm Beach County teen far too young to practice medicine nabbed. Malachi Love Robinson, now charged with practicing medicine without a license and grand theft. At his residence today, he didn't have much to say. But police say here at this office complex behind this door, he dressed the part, took the vital signs of an undercover officer, and asked questions any real physician would. Police say he even hired staff to help. Yeah, Oncologist Alan that. Schultz has his office in the same building, but had no idea what Love Robinson was allegedly up to. I've heard of these things happening, uh, but you're right, I never thought it really would happen in this building. Our check of the state's business records this afternoon found that the New Birth Life Medical Center was started in November 
and the then 17-year-old listed himself as the registered agent and manager of the company, and it was active, up and running. A tip to the Florida Department of Health led to the undercover sting operation. He has slipped and did something wrong. I just ask that, the, that, that uh, everybody pray for him. Detectives say an 86-year-old woman out to try naturopathic medicine for stomach trouble found him online. Police say he went to her home, and when she was being taken to the hospital, he helped himself to her checkbook, writing checks of $500, $1,000, and $1,200. Theft, the police report says, wiped the elderly woman's bank account out. Now, Love Robinson has not reached out to our station in Palm Beach to further explain himself, and no one answered the number that was listed for him when we called. He was reportedly cited by the state for practicing medicine without a license just a month before he opened the business where police found him this week. Also, reportedly, he had been at a hospital with a lab coat on, too. This time, he'll get his day in court. Willard Shepard, NBC6 News. Good evening, everyone. Um, first of all, I would just like to simply say that on behalf of myself and my family, um, we thank you for the concerns in the community about the accusations that have happened. Um, I just want to say that I am deeply saddened um, and a little disrespected uh, by some of the things that have come forth. Uh, but I will say that my attorneys uh, are working hard. They're working around the clock to make sure that this issue gets resolved in the best way possible. I would just simply ask that you please allow the attorneys to do their job. Um, you respect the privacy, you respect my privacy and my family's privacy. And just please allow us to deal with this issue the way any f normal family would. And I would simply ask that if you could please pray for us in this time that everything that has happened, that we get the truth out of it. And not only the truth, but we can shed some good light on some of the things that are happening in the community today. That we can shed a good light on some of the positive things that are happening and stop worrying about bashing someone and start lifting them up. Once again, I want to thank everyone for their support, whether it was good or bad. Um, I've had some great supporters and I've had some people who have said some negative things, but everyone is entitled to their opinion. And once again, I am not upset and I respect the community for the concerns that they have. But once again, just please respect our wishes and allow our attorneys to, to do the best that they can to work on this case. Thank you so very much and have a great night. Now with this kid pretending to be a senator, it just makes no sense. There's also another case that came out a few months ago about a young man who pretended to be a police officer and he had been impersonating the police since he was 14 years old and he recently did it again, but this time he's 21 years old and he's being charged with a felony. I want you guys to go ahead and check out this news clip and I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary. The man has been charged with impersonating a police officer and this is not the first time he has done that. Eyewitness News reporter Karen Jordan joins us live from Chicago Police Headquarters with more on this arrest. Karen. Well, Linda Vincent Richardson made national headlines when he dressed up as a police officer at the age of 14 and managed to work a full shift alongside real officers. He got in trouble for impersonating a cop and apparently it's happened again. 21 year old Vincent Richardson has been busted for posing as a cop for the third time. He was previously arrested at the ages of 14 and 19. Richardson and another man were arrested Friday afternoon after police stopped their car while investigating a call of shots fired in the 1200 block of West Marquette in Inglewood. Police say Richardson and Dontrell Moore, also 21, were each wearing bulletproof vests and had a police duty belt, a scanner, a BB gun, and a stun gun. They were each charged with impersonating a police officer, a felony, and bail was given to each man of a half million dollars. In 2009, Richardson was 14 when he dressed up as an officer and was allowed to go on patrol with an officer for more than five hours on the south side. Richardson was arrested again on impersonation charges after posing as a cop and trying to buy police clothes at a uniform store in 2013. All right, so you guys just saw that news clip. One thing I will say about all these people, these young folks, is that they are very ambitious and that they will not take no for an answer. I mean, you got folks who literally went to school for eight years to become doctors and senators and, and police officers and everything else, and they can't get no damn job. But yet and still, these teenagers can just walk 
walks in, pretend to be somebody, and literally be there for a month. The whole situation to me is just crazy as hell. But again, it's really hard to knock them because it's clearly obvious these kids are go-getters. I think the way that we can help children like this who really want to go into these fields because it's obvious they're not down to pay no type of student loans. They want good credit. They're like, fuck that student loan shit. I'll just call myself a doctor, a senator, or a cop, okay? I think what we can do to try and help children like that who want to, you know, get into these positions and who are really interested in doing this and maybe not ready to go to school, I think that they should be departments that take kids like this under their wing and they show them the ins and outs of the job. You know, show them what police officers go through day to day. You know, show them the, the manual work, the desk work, and then taking them out on patrol and having them see what police officers do and what they have to go through. You know, have a child shadow senator and and see that it's not just fun and games and them making press appearances, but that they're actually doing work. Have children shadow teachers and shadow doctors and stuff like that. I think that would be a really, really good start. I think if they were allowed to kind of shadow these people that they want to be like so bad, maybe that would encourage them to go to school and to pursue those careers. You know, but the whole situation to me is just ridiculous. And this kid, Isaiah, he did it all for nothing. It wasn't like he was getting a check. He wasn't getting paid. It's almost like he did it just to see if he could get away with it. And you know what? He did. You know, but now they're looking to arrest him because he's 18 years old. So this whole situation is just really damn ridiculous. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire crazy situation, honey, that's once again coming from Outrageous Ass Ohio. All right. Deuces. Hey, you guys. It's your girl, T. Make sure to subscribe, like, and share my videos. You can also visit lovelytea.com to purchase any merchandise. Also, don't forget to click the boxes down below to watch any of my previous videos. Talk to y'all later. Deuces.